Mr. Chairman, Chairman Cole, Ranking Member McGovern, and the distinguished members of this committee, thank you so much for the opportunity to testify on fiscal year 2024 Department of State Foreign Operations and related programs uh, appropriation bill. Um, this bill was developed over many months through a very careful, thorough review of the organizations and programs that receive U.S. taxpayer dollars. Now, if for anybody who's read the bill, you know that it reflects a really significant different approach from what we've been dealing with in the past, but it, it's also really straightforward. So let me, be every, let me just be really clear what this bill does. If you are a friend or an ally of the United States, this bill supports you. But if you're an adversary, an adversary of a country, an organization, or you are cozying up to the adversaries of the United States, let me be very frank, you're not going to like this bill. Among the factors considered were, were, were whether we could see demonstrated real results, whether the investments were something that advances the national security interests of the United States, and while, wherever possible, responsibly reducing spending. The State and Foreign Operations Bill totals $52.5 billion, a new budget authority, as the chairman has mentioned, which is a reduction of $7.2 billion, or 12% reduction from fiscal year 2023 enacted levels. And it's 16.4 uh, below, 16.4 uh, billion, or 24% below the president's request. This amount is offset by $11.1 .1 billion in rescissions of what I believe are clearly partisan and wasteful spending items. So this bill includes measures that address the national security threat to the United States posed by communist China. And it really responds, uh, members, in a, in a really aggressive, unprecedented manner. The United States must get serious about the malign and the just destabilizing dangerous actions of communist China around the world. This bill funds important programs to counter the threat of communist China with $4.4 billion. But let me just put that in perspective. That is $1 billion above what the president requested, even though, by the way, in his request, he's spending a lot more money. $1 billion above the president's request to confront, confront communist China. This bill supports our friends in the Indo-Pacific, and it includes new safeguards to prevent taxpayer dollars from supporting the Chinese Communist Party. You may say, uh, you know, what is he talking about? I'll mention that later. Yes, we, 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 we go out of our way to, again, confront Communist China. Furthermore, the bill encourages investment for nearshoring, obviously something that is critical to supply chains so they are brought closer to the United States, and Americans, we are not dependent on China for essential products, essential needs. For the first time, and I'm exceedingly proud of this, for the first time, the bill provides $500 million on foreign military finance for Taiwan. That's never been done in this bill before. This is critical to support a key democratic ally that is on the front lines of China's threat and bullying. Members, another priority in this bill which impacts, I think, all Americans, is to combat the trafficking of opiates and obviously particular fentanyl. Every single district, our districts, our neighborhoods, and our schools continue to see the effects of this deadly, deadly drug. There's so many examples, but I just want, I'm sure you all saw just last week, one year old boy fell ill and later died, and three other kids got sick in, an, in what seems to be another exposure in New York City to this deadly drug. And as you all know, 300 Americans die every single day from fentanyl poisoning. So funding directed in this bill will strengthen efforts to counter that just deadly production and trafficking of fentanyl. Now, before, uh, before discussing funding for the United Nations, I think it's important that we take a step back and let's look about, let's talk about who is running the show 
there at the UN. You know, this isn't the category of you can't make this stuff up, but unfortunately, it's true. Russia was chair of the UN Security Council during the month of April. Yes, Russia. Iran is currently an elected vice president of the UN General Assembly. This is, by the way, something that we are helping to fund. Communist China, whose genocide against Uyghurs is raging, and, and Cuba, one of the world's oldest and most brutal dictatorships, both of those, in the category that you can't make this stuff up, sit on the UN Human Rights Council, for God's sake. And, as if that wasn't enough, North Korea, I don't, I don't even know how to begin to describe the, the regime in North Korea, that's that terrorist state that starves its own people, that threatens the world, is a member of the World Health Organization. While Taiwan, by the way, a responsible democracy, they have been blocked from membership to that body. Really? Really? It sounds like fake, but those are the facts. So therefore, my dear friends, it should come as no surprise that no funds, no funds are included in this bill for the UN regular budget. UN contributions, uh, US contributions for UN peacekeeping were reduced to comply with US law. I know, novel concept, we are going to comply to US law in this bill when it comes to uh, that, that function. And furthermore, contributions to international organizations in a responsible way are cut by 82%. This bill also prohibits, uh, prohibits funds from the Green Climate Fund and the Clean Technology Fund. Furthermore, to address the just crazy expansion of bureaucracy, the bill eliminates funding for special envoys and special representatives that are not authorized by you, by us, by Congress, or have not been confirmed by the Senate. Look, let's be very clear. If they're that important, for God's sake, have them authorized <laughs> or have the Senate confirm them. I want to mention a few allies. Uh, this bill provides unwavering, unwavering support for our, democratically, for our democratic ally Israel and recognizes the vital security partners in the region. Finally, and I think equally as important, this bill includes, includes all, all long-lasting pro-life protections, which include a prohibition on all taxpayer funds, taxpayer funds from being used to pay for abortions, and builds on those requirements by applying the protecting life and global health assistance policy, assistance policy to all, all global health funding. Yes, in this process, we have differences. And we have differences among ourselves, and we clearly have partisan differences. So I was not surprised, my dear friends, that after the bill was released, my colleagues, my Democratic colleagues on the committee, um, immediately released a, sent out a press release condemning the bill. I will have to tell you that I was surprised by some of the issues that my Democratic colleagues put in their press release as specific issues that they have problems with this bill. Uh, and I'm going to ask later if, uh, if I can submit for the record the uh, press release that my Democratic colleagues uh, put out. Without objection. Thank you. Um, so let me just kind of read some of this. The, the, the press release expressed that, I'm going to quote, the bill, this is some of the problems that my, colleague, my Democratic colleagues had on the bill in writing. They put this. That the bill prohibits funding, which by the way, it does, from Quote, for, quote, the Wuhan Institute of Virology, yeah, we do, we do, we do have that prohibition, the Eco Health Alliance, gain of function research, and any lab controlled by China, Russia, Cuba, Iran, North Korea, and Venezuela. End of quote. I'm quoting from the press release of our esteemed Democrats on this bill. Well, look, that list, that is the official list of foreign adversaries of the United States. So yeah, absolutely. 
we have language we explicitly do not do not permit funding for those countries. Does anybody think that taxpayer money should go to those countries? That, that's, that's a difference of opinion that we clearly have with this bill. Uh, there's also something else I'd like to quote. They express, our Democratic friends, who I have great respect for, concern with the, quote, partisan writers, but they, they highlight some. And this is one that they highlighted. They're concerned because we, um, we, we have prohibition on funds to the government of the PRC or the Chinese Communist Party. And yes, that we prevent lending from international financial institutions to the PRC. Yeah, we do have differences of opinion, and that's okay. That is okay. That's why this process is so beautiful. Um, I'm not usually shocked, uh, but I'm still, frankly, a little bit in disbelief that, that my colleagues in the minority would think that under any scenario, that U.S. taxpayer dollars should go to support the Communist Chinese Party or these other countries that I mentioned that they quote in their press release criticizing this bill. Mr. Chairman and the esteemed members of this committee, thank you so much uh, for holding this hearing. I know that you all are exceedingly busy. Uh, so again, I'm, I'm, I'm grateful uh, for this opportunity and I'm ready to answer any questions. With that, Mr. Chairman, uh, I respectfully yield back. Thank you very much. We'll next go to my good friend, the uh, ranking member of the full Appropriations Committee, uh, Representative